Hey, everybody, you're listening to episode 228 of Tech Fetish. I am your host, Elena Yee, and here with me today are Justin Davis. Hello. Alex Roth. Hi. And Mark Ryan Slee. What's up? And we are all getting used to this thing that's staring at us, also known as a video camera. Yeah, we should all be used to video cameras by now. Mm -hmm. Mm. Maybe not in the podcast setting, though. It's a little different. Podcast is different. Still making sure it's not going to suck out my soul. Mm -hmm. It's always a risk. Yep. So I see today we are going the healthy route. We have no soda. Yeah, except except for... for that yeah. soda. <laughs> that one Coca-Cola. Coke that Alex already That little eight ounce drank. second the joke I was making before we recorded is he's got a little eight ounce V eight size bottle of right. can of soda. Right. That's a normal size just like can. It just in his hand it looks like one of the yeah. the little eight ounce ones. It's look it's like when Andre the Giant was holding have you seen that photo of mm-hmm. Andre the Giant holding the twelve ounce beer can? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just had lunch, uh, and so I Me too. Con- I consciously didn't have a fresca because then I would probably wet myself during this podcast. Mm. That would be a little awkward. It I'd, would be weird. I mean, I, we are doing a video clean. now, so if you're going to wet yourself on a podcast, I wouldn't well tell you one. that it happened. I would just sit here silently. <laughs> <laughs> we would, say like, we would just catch it in the edit. Yeah. <laughs> What's that sound? <clears throat> oh. <laughs> I had three tacos for lunch. Three tacos? Mm-hmm. I had one burrito. Mm. What do you, what do you, that's about equivalent. Oh. Those compadres. Oh. That's right. Your uh, died Victor's don't, is good. Victor's don't tell good. Mrs. Victor. I know. Guapo. You, yeah, you won't be guapo anymore. I know. <laughs> Welcome to burrito fetish. Yeah, I was just going to say food fetish. That's, good. We That's could my do real a, fetish. We could do a podcast all about burritos, but I have a feeling we're going to end up doing a podcast all about Apple today. Yes. Yeah. We once, uh, several years ago, me and Ryan Clements and Greg Miller and some other, Colin and some other people were out at a bar drinking a lot. And we were having a discussion. It was a Mexican bar. And it was how many burritos would you have to – no, it was if you ate nothing but burritos, breakfast, lunch, dinner, three burritos a day, mm-hmm. how long would it take that volume of burritos to fill the bar? Okay. <laughs> like would it happen in your lifetime or like in a year? Or like, well, so, And you guys figured it out? Well, so at the, we emailed – we were arguing about it and we couldn't come to any kind of consensus. So we fired off a drunk email to IGN status. <laughs> we filed off an email to Scott Mucci. Nice. It's like, so he gets this email at like one in the morning that's riddled with grammatical and spelling errors. It's like, important <laughs> how many burritos would oh fill God. this volume. Um, and for the record, it turns out that I was correct about the burrito math. Suck it, Clements. You were correct or you were close? I mean, closest. I was the closest by far. And, and this was according to, to Scott's, what, like 2, 2 a.m. reply? No, I mean, he didn't reply until the next week, but he took it like really seriously. He replied in the same way that he would reply to like a business analytics email from work of like <laughs> needing to know how many unique viewers were on this particular page on a particular day. Yeah, he likes, if you give him a problem that, that can be solved with a number, he likes to solve it. Yeah. That's like an XKCD joke is uh, this thing called nerd sniping. If you ever see like a physicist crossing the road, like hold up a really hard like equation for them and mm-hmm. then they'll stop. <laughs> <laughs> and their tracks to like start figuring, like, hmm. Oh, that's an interesting problem. That's how you get them from not killing themselves by accident by crossing the road. Yeah. The it's, anecdote's probably not funny to anybody because they don't know Scott Mucci, but it's funny the idea yeah. of him getting a drunken request for strange data. That reminds me of another anecdote I was just reading yesterday. It was uh, a bunch of anecdotes about <coughs> Albert Einstein. Perhaps you've heard of him. Mm, uh, a little I bit. I know, yeah. He, 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 he's a famous dude. Uh, there was some anecdote about him. I don't even remember what the situation was, but he went somewhere and he had this this guy with him, and he would just like be talking about theories, and then the guy would just kind of either nod or shake his head, and someone asked him like, well, "What's this guy?" He's like, "He's my mathematician. He's the guy that does the math and tells me if this is BS or <laughs> valid." Oh, I, I thought you were going to tell a different story where he was in an interview who was asked what a second most important discovery was, and it was that when he's making soup, if he puts an egg in the soup, then he can boil an egg without having to dirty right. a second pan. <laughs> <laughs> Albert Einstein needs a dishwasher. That might be more useful to me than yeah. relativity. Yep. Um, it was. It's funny you mentioned that because I was talking with a cousin of mine, and his wife was complaining because apparently all he does when he cooks is does uses the one pot method. So he cooks dishes that mm-hmm. only require one pot. Yeah, okay. And it drove her crazy. Why? I, I don't know. Just because it's a limited number of options. I guess. But I said to her, I said I would do the same thing. I do it all the time. What are you yeah. talking about? And she looked at me like I was the crazy one. But not like exclusively. You're not like, mm, I'd like to make this, but I'd have to cook it. I'd have to dirty a sep- second pot. I don't know. It depends how tired I am. Do you eat? Uh, you live by yourself. Mm. Um, 
mostly. Well, but you, you're not like you don't have like a boyfriend or husband or anything like that. Um, not that I lives with you, <laughs> and neither do you. What I'm getting at is Mark what and I, you, Mark like and roommates. I, what are you Mark and I at? live with someone, and <laughs> Elena and Alex don't. Besides roommates, and so uh, do you guys eat like a sad dinner over the sink? <laughs> And no. Like, or do you actually what? do? I eat, a, I eat a sad dinner in front of Netflix. Because I know I'm not going to name. Over the sink. <laughs> Wait, so you do eat a sad dinner over the sink. It's not even over. Well, it's not the sink. Like, sometimes I'll just eat standing up because, like, Aww. I don't feel like sitting down. I be, I sit all day. I throw all my food up against the ceiling, and yeah. then it falls, <laughs> you know, and I catch it. And then I just take one mop, and I clean the ceiling. A the fellow, one mop a method. fellow IGN <laughs> editor who I will not name uh, is a bachelor, lives by himself, and he says when he, uh, you know, is in his place by himself, he eats, he makes something really fast and then just eats it over the sink because he sees dinner as something that he just needs to get out of the way. Mm. It's just a thing that you have to do in order so- to get back to video games. I sometimes ish. feel that way. <sighs> Huh. Yeah, uh. like I got home last night, and before I got home, I stopped by uh, the beach and took some pictures. Mm-hmm. And so, I just wanted to get home and edit those pictures. When right. I got home, I was like, "Oh, it's like eight o'clock. I should probably eat food." And so, I yeah, that's that's the way it happened for me. You, did you, you ate a sad dinner over the sink? Uh, I don't even remember. I think I had a bowl of cereal. Oh man, <laughs> I don't know. I would say that's actually to me sadder than eating over a sink. The bowl of cereal. Yeah. Like, if you're eating, I'm sorry. Like no offense to your cereal. Like if you dig it, that's awesome, right? But for me, it cereal was a would be scoop sad. Raisin bran. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Double I'm scoop. super. I'm raisin super, bran. But I just said. I'm just saying. If you had like a hot meal mm-hmm. and you're eating it standing up, I still think that's more exciting than having like cereal. Yeah. Okay. I think uh, I'm. I judge people that live that life, but I'm like so close. I'm like one degree away from it. Like when my wife's out of town, dinner is usually chips and salsa. <laughs> <laughs> For the longest time, I only had four cups because then well, we never need? really had exactly because then you can't pile up a zillion cups in the mm. sink. Yeah. But now that I live somewhere with a dishwasher, I have a human amount of cups. But before that, it's just four. All right, so this is no, you know, technology. Cups. This was this was food fetish for the first what like seven minutes. So. Yeah, well, you got a timer. It was we'll, almost... we'll put that. We'll put a timestamp on there for people who just. My cups get to have the a USB C port. <laughs> but what's that? Big deal. I, I know. So we are pretty much going to talk about everything that Apple announced earlier this week, um, which includes a new MacBook that has yeah. one port, and that is a USB-C port. <clears throat> what can you do with that USB-C port? Everything. Absolutely. Actually, probably nothing. I don't have anything with a USB-C port. It's, it's a... But it charges the device. Yeah. Let's start there. So uh, it replaces the charging port. And then what else? Well, you can use it for video... You can use it for video, video output. output. Yeah. You can use it uh, for, you know, your standard data transfer, which mm-hmm. is, you know, the USB, USB. specification. And the nicest thing about USB-C, it works whichever way you plug the USB Reversible. stick in. It's pretty magic. I love that. Yeah. It'll no longer be the try it, doesn't work, flip it, doesn't work, and then flip it back works method anymore, which why is you, how Why USB... do you think we had to wait until 2015 for that to happen? God, I blame Obama. You think so? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It seems like it's long overdue. Because I mean, it's such a universal standard, you know, and that's what Apple's going up against. Is they're, you know, they're introducing a new thing, you know. Apple would have never, if they were the makers of USB, they would, they would have never made that stuff work one way. It's a very un-Apple-like thing to do. To what? Oh, to do like it if, one way. Like if Apple would have made USB themselves. Well, I mean, they had the thirty-pin connector, well, they, I was which about, was yeah. I was just about to say the thirty-pin connector was not reversible. But they yeah. replaced. They got rid of it. Eventually, but that wasn't that long ago. <laughs> and only because what people weren't using them, or no, just because they wanted a better standard. They made yeah. a lightning port. Yeah. That's what it's called, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's funny um, that they had that proprietary yeah. port, and then that that thing's not even on this new MacBook. That's true. Well, yeah, it is. Um, Wait, you're that's, thinking that's... you're thinking Thunderbolt. I guess I am. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, the Wait, other... so is the USB C? Is it MagSafe still, or no? It's no. Not. no. No. So you do have to be careful again about you know ripping your uh, laptop away from your cables. Yeah, well these are the sacrifices we have to make. For but progress. really, it's not even just that you're ripping away from the cable. You, I mean, f- to make that thing really work, you're gonna have to buy that adapter, which is not included. You have to spend another but eighty dollars. Nice oh, oh, eighty. Eighty dollars. Eighty dollars. Oh, Apple, I love you so much, but sometimes you don't treat me well. It kind of reminds me of how, like, their phones are so gorgeous and so nice to hold, and then you have to put them in a case. 
You know? Well, you don't like, have well, to. You do have to. We talked about you this. You don't in, have in a, to. In a vacuum, the thing is perfect, but in practice, slightly less. Just live less. dangerously, man. Just live your life. Get, throw I, that case in the trash and I don't go have, live your life. You'll be I don't so have that much kind happier. Of insurance, oh, Justin. speaking of which, we got feedback about your like case thing, and yeah. people were like not I, down with yeah. your like, I didn't wild that dangerously. and free. Where was the feedback? I think I there were some people on Twitter that were like, what? Oh. No, you have to use a case. I don't think I saw any of that. Yeah, you replied to it. <laughs> All right. What did I say? Drunk Justin. Justin was in a few I, I don't, state. I don't drink anymore. I don't get drunk anymore. I haven't been drunk in nine months. It would be, it would have sounded way better if you forgot about it and you said it was because I was drunk. Oh. <laughs> like uh, like the uh, Top Gear guy. The Top Gear guy? Which guy? Well, that's a tangent. We don't need to get into it. Sure Let's is. table that for now. And mm-hmm. we'll come back to it I can't, later. You mentioned Top Gear. I can't. Jeremy Clarkson? So Jeremy Clarkson got suspended, and they went to his co-host's house. They mm-hmm. went to his house and knocked on his door, and he answered the door because I think he didn't realize it was reporters. And they're like, yeah. do you have any comment on what happened? He's like, well, I was blind drunk at the time, so I have nothing to say <laughs> was that the, Was that the younger guy? Or no, the, the – what's his name? The, the, the kind of long James hair. May. Yeah, James May. Yeah. And uh, so he that. said – he said, no, he said, first of all, he said, Clarkson's a total knob, and I often don't agree with what he says. <laughs> and they said, but what about this particular subject? And he says, I was blind drunk, and I have no, no further comment. And then he just shuts the door. What a good guy. Amazing. It's an incredible comment. But no, I wasn't. I don't remember um, what I said on Twitter. Anyway, so, the point is, phone cases are hokum. Hokum, whatever. I broke the glass on my iPhone. Shoot the glass. So, I don't know. I think cases are necessary, unfortunately. Well, don't be a clumsy... Is, Clara is a is a USB. <laughs> Where was that going, Justin? Clumsy Clara, don't be a clumsy Clara. <laughs> like, oh, what's the name with a C? Exactly. <laughs> so, is this USB C uh, adapter slash hub then you think uh, basically a requirement if you buy this new MacBook? I think if you want to get any real functionality yeah. from it, yes. Oh yeah. And because yeah. I mean, if that single port pretty much does everything. You're going to have to swap out the cables constantly depending on what you want to do with Wait, it. Wait, it's a little weird. And I don't know this. Is there not a second USB-C port on it? There's no. only Just the one. Just a single port. Yeah, but, so that but, means if you're charging if, your laptop and you've got like 1% and you're like, oh, I need a USB drive a file, yeah. you're like, oh, I better give this thing a couple more minutes to charge in before I unplug no, it. No, because you know? the uh, the adapter actually has a pass-through. Oh, really? Yeah. So that, well, okay. that's what I mean. If that's you, like, that's if you why don't you need have the adapter. the adapter, you need to interrupt your charge to use a USB-C. Yeah. But if or, you do have the adapter, you can do both. And what is this adapter adapter? Adapt too is it? It splits out, so it's, it splits the USB C into its three. Yeah, so you know, the it's video a dongle, the that, USB. The, yeah, so the dongle has three different ports on it. Okay. So that way you can get three different. So functions at least I'm out not buying three dongles. I've only got one yeah. thing to leave in a coffee shop. Sure. <laughs> Although out eighty dollars. The dongle, but it's eighty dollars. The dongle yeah. doesn't have SD card reader, does it? I don't believe so. That's, no. that's a problem. Is it? Oh, I take a well, lot of photos. Well, no, so. because oh, you would. Oh, you take a lot of You would have to basically. So what you would have to do is get a card reader plug, plug that into, into an dog. adapter no plug it into an adapter to adapt it from usb type a oh, to yeah. usb type c uh-huh. and then plug that into the adapter yeah. that's plugged into it's your like the human centipede this is like the movie <laughs> adaptation yeah i mean the i don't the con, the price doesn't really concern me because there will be third party ones super you fast you mean that that adapter is 80 dollars yeah mm-hmm. so i mean that is kind of an offensively high price but apple so first of all the apple tax isn't a thing anymore i was really annoyed to see people continue bringing that up because their computers spec wise are very comparable to pcs but that doesn't extend to accessories mm-hmm. apple accessories remain more expensive yeah, than third party accessories why, why couldn't they just toss that in the box yeah. yeah. Um, so I, it, again, it doesn't bother me. I'm, first of all, I'm not planning on getting that this margin, computer. Bro. But even if I was, yeah. I would buy a $15 third-party adapter. Because like my MacBook Air came with a lot of adapters that I never use. Did it? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, maybe it was the first-gen one. I own the first-gen MacBook yeah. Air, which was really not a very good computer. Um, it overheated a lot. I kind of the USB C thing, like we've raised all these complaints, which are super, super valid. Like even the MagSafe, you know, that was, I liked the way that that felt and functioned. Um, but I do think USB C is an improvement. You yeah. Know, like, I, I think when it, you know, I mean, it should probably just have two USB C ports, really. That would be nice. It's probably going to be painful to be one of the first people to have this thing, but yeah. in a few years, it'll probably be way more standard and it'll probably be pretty nice. Well, yeah. USB C is not like solely something no, no. that Apple's doing, right? So, I mean, it's no, also it's out yeah. on the, the new uh, Chromebook yeah. that Google just put out. Was it like yesterday? The Chromebook yeah. Pixel? Yeah, the new yeah, version of the like, Pixel. Hey, guys, us too. Us too. Yeah, so, I mean, it's on there. And it's this, like it's a specification that I saw at CES and I even wrote about it a little bit. Yeah. Um, and there. They had mentioned that the manufacturers were planning to start rolling that out and that we'd see it more likely in mass by the end of the year. Yeah. So I think this is just like the first trickle of it. 
Yeah, I think Lacey already has like a drive that's USB C, you know, to, to go with this hmm. thing. It's crazy that after years and years and years, all these standards like USB is finally being updated. HTTP, I don't think we covered it on Tech Fetish, but the new HTTP you know protocol standard is uh-huh. finally coming down the pike. HTML5 is finally sort of reaching its final form. It's all happening, guys and ladies. I, I'm just one. I say guys <laughs> colloquially. Like, okay, you're one of the guys, in that sense. You know well, you I mean. said ladies, and this, I'm just the one. He's including so. me. Oh, I, well, okay. I was. I was also including the listeners. Mm. Hey, listeners. Ap- hey, listeners. Apple Watch, though. Apple Watch. Are we yeah, moving on to that? We I can move on I to that. Time. I do. Oh, man, I do I think. Like I'm not done talking no? about the new okay. MacBook. Because oh, I, yeah, I kind of do think though that with the new MacBook. So here's the here's what's the confusing part. So I was doing the live blog for you know IGN. Yeah. And they pull it up on screen and my first thought is oh they redid the macbook air right like this is a yeah. like an addition to that line and then they kept saying macbook over and over again mm-hmm. and i said to myself oh this is probably something different so it turns out this is its own separate line essentially we still have yes. macbook air and we still have macbook pro <clears throat> and now we have this weird kind of random to me addition to that where Mm. well i know you kind of disagree but i think that i'm just not convinced that this is going to sell well for them because i just i think i think this eats the macbook air's lunch i think it's going to make the macbook air not sell. no because the macbook air has a more powerful processor it's going to do better and it's cheaper the macbook air um you can spend less than what you would pay for this MacBook, and you're going to get better performance out of it because this is using the new MacBook is using a fanless design, which already is going to start constraining performance. And Alex and I were talking about this yeah. because, you know, we were just saying that with that first gen MacBook Air, you know, you had problems with overheating, you had problems <coughs> with performance, and I'm just wondering if that's going to be the same issue here with this new MacBook. I mean, so the Air, the new MacBook, confusingly, is thinner and lighter than the than MacBook the Air, Air. Yeah. Yep. and it's got a yeah. ret- it's got a Retina screen that somehow the MacBook Air still lacks. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, pure horsepower performance-wise, sure, but there's more than one way to like sort of evaluate whether one product is you know higher or lower on a product yeah. line. Um, I don't see a tremendous amount of reason to buy a MacBook Air in the face of the new MacBook. I think if I were buying one right now, I might still prefer the Air, just yeah. because of the horsepower. Honestly, uh, I was, but the, I was in the market for a new computer. Yeah, um, I have a 2010 MacBook Air, so I guess it's one generation newer than yours, uh, and it's actually suited me pretty well until I get into editing video and photos and stuff like that. So. Um, There's definitely some confusion and blurring between the three product lines, but it is it is three products lines now. It used to yeah. be, it used to be a long time ago, and mm-hmm. then Apple condensed down yeah. to, down to two. I, and and I like that old three. MacBook so much, especially the black the, the black one for the time. Yeah, yeah, the old, one? old by today's standards. The, the black MacBook was like such a nice looking computer. The like, black book. The black book. I was really disappointed that they didn't offer like this one in that nice like you know sort of blackish gray that they put iphones in you can get space gray though no oh, you can't can you yeah. Oh, yeah yeah so the new macbook yeah. is it like so it's, okay. is it's more like the ipads now where they have like they don't have the back yeah. look bat li- sorry back bat lick <laughs> can't the, do it guys apple, the apple doesn't glow anymore thank you yeah. <laughs> no glow. That's a big problem for me. So oh, is that true? It's like, yeah, yeah. It's like, so this no is, glow logo. This is gone. Like, wow. It's more like the iPad now where it's just that kind of like shiny metallic That's logo. Great. Is it? Yeah. I mean, this has been the app of the glowing app. Like when I got my first MacBook Pro in 2004, I thought it was really like kind of cool. You're saying it's old? It, it's starting to feel oh. a little old. Justin's yeah. over it. Yeah, it's starting to feel a little bit old, and I also feel like it's slightly, like, garish is too strong of a word, but, like, kind of, it leans in that direction. Like, if I'm on, like, a live stream at IGN or something, I feel like I want to cover it up, mm. like... Maybe chintzy? I don't know. It's just a little too, like, brand I don't. Big. I don't have, like, I would need to, to come up with the words to articulate it, but I'm, it feels like it's time for it to go. Interesting. But, uh... So you're not going to miss it? No. You will? <laughs> no. Oh, you were being sarcastic. <laughs> yeah, I, okay. I mean, and... It's interesting that they got rid of it, but yeah. I don't care. No. It's just so the new MacBook is following more like the iPad yeah. sort of decoration, where it's, it has the different kind of logo and it also has the three color choices. Yeah, yeah. which the color look really are good. Nice. Yeah. I don't know that gold one. It just I, seems a little over the top. I wouldn't yeah, get a gold. Nice, I wouldn't get a gold iPhone, but the the gold MacBook actually looks looks pretty good. We uh, I want to circle back. I like to the Space Gray better. The the MacBook Air. There's been all this makes sense in the face of all the rumors we've been hearing about a super iPad. 
We've been hearing about a super iPad for a long time, a big iPad, a powerful iPad, a beefy mm, iPad. The iPad Pro. That's 100% going to replace the MacBook Air. The new MacBook is thinner and lighter than the MacBook Air. So sure. the MacBook Air is going to go away and be replaced with a super iPad, and then that'll be their line. You know, That have... would be depressing if that actually happened, though. That's what's going to happen. You it would it, be you heard it super here depressing. Just because the MacBook Air is a, like this nice intersection between performance and portability for me, which is another reason why I ended up opting for it as my work computer, in mm-hmm. addition to just staying familiar with iOS and all the changes that you know come with that. But, I mean, if you replace it with an iPad, like, the internal specs on that are just not going to be enough to do what... But it's like, it's, what... it's your choice. Like, you can also get the MacBook. Like, if yeah. you need, you know, a full keyboard and yada yada, like, that's an option you have available to but you. But again, with the, the new MacBook, it's not... I mean, it's not in our hands yet for review. So, yeah. obviously, it's not... We haven't been able to test it for performance-wise. But, like, sure. Mark Ryan, like, if you're processing video or even doing, like, heavy Photoshop work, I'm, I'm just not yeah, but sure I can't if it's really going to... Hold up to that. You do. You have a MacBook Air now, and mm-hmm. you do do some video editing and uh, Photoshop work on it. Yeah. So, but it doesn't seem like that machine's d- intended for that to begin with. It's surprisingly good with Premiere. It's actually terrible with iMovie, which might not be <laughs> what you expect. Interesting. Um, Lightroom is terrible on my MacBook, though. Yeah. That's what. See, I just, I'm. I guess I'm unconcerned with the specs, like the in. You know that that Core M chip, or I don't know if it's Core M. Core M. Intel M chip. It's Core M. Yeah. It's Core M. Um, Korma. Because I just feel like, you know, it's going to be a lot of, like, college students or people that are just going to be browsing the Internet. and Like, what do you need that for? What well, you- I mean, if you're, say, you're an engineering student, I mean, I don't recall exactly, but if it's, I think AutoCAD might be available on Mac now. Sure. So, I mean, that's not a I lightweight mean, I use, program. I use a MacBook Pro because I need, you know, I need that processing power. For gaming? Yeah, or, you know, and I and I Premiere and other stuff. Like, I just need them. I, I'm a power user, but most people aren't. And I don't think, you know, if you're going to use Facebook and Google Docs and Microsoft Word and Excel, you know, and, but and, and AIM or whatever, the Snapchat, whatever the kids are doing. The children. I do feel, though, that you're looking at it very much in a context of, like, right now. Um, but I think most people, when they buy a laptop or any kind of computer, they do think a little bit about future-proofing. I mean, you can't future-proof anything 100% Mm -hmm. or not even 50%. But honestly, if you're going to sink a certain amount of money into a purchase, I do think you're going to try to hang on to that for at least two to three years. Yeah. So, I mean, mean, it could work now. For sure. Right. So it works fine now, I assume. But even in like two years, will it? That's kind of the question that I feel like a lot of people are going to I mean, it feels like the MacBook 2, like whatever we see in a year or whenever, will maybe be, you know, we'll have the spec bump that it maybe should have had to begin with or could have had to begin with how um, much ram can you put in this thing eight J- up to eight yeah. yeah i have eight in my air and i really like my air this is i got the latest the second latest air now okay yeah yeah it's i mean so the air the I've been, base I've, model of the macbook comes with eight yeah i don't think oh, really get, i don't think it upgrades that's nice the four is a little low yeah, I think the only upgrade you can really do is actually it's got just double the hard SSD. drive space of the gotcha. air. I mean, I, it's notably meant to be positioned as you know, despite the processor. So, it's do you think it is it the mid tier? Does yeah. it go yeah. Air, MacBook, MacBook Pro? Yes. Price that, wise, do it think? does. Price but wise, it does, and I think to a degree. Because that's what's I really mean, confusing Justin me. Justin has a point with that Retina display. I think that's yeah. what's kind of putting it into that middle range where yeah. it has yeah. some of the features of the, the MacBook Pro. The hard drive's twice as big. I mean, yeah. in every in every measure except that CPU. It's a yeah. it's a it's a step higher on the scale. Or ports, if you care about ports. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, I don't I don't care about the Retina display. I just want like speed and battery life. And the battery life is supposed to be pretty comparable though yeah. to the mm-hmm. MacBook Air. So yeah, they said like nine that, hours, right? Yeah, so on that front, it's not too different. No. Yeah, I mean, okay. I, yeah. I I've been defending it, although I still don't want one. Um, <laughs> I was really disappointed to see the MacBook Pros not updated; they were left behind. Um, they're uh, they almost... updated the 13 inch. Right. Well, excuse me. Right, the 15 inch. I'm in the market for a new 15 inch MacBook Pro. Mine's almost four years old, and to the not e- to have them not even touched is well, that might be because of it's just Intel's fault. Yeah, yes, honestly, because I think Broadwell, the change over from Haswell to Broadwell hasn't mm-hmm. been as huge in gains per, for, for performance Them gains. as people had hoped for. So they might be waiting for, I think, what is the next one, Skylake? Well, I think the Boy, other issue, too, is, already? and normally I would not have any information on this topic, but I happen to be shopping for a computer, so uh-huh. I'm a little bit more educated. Uh, I think uh, my understanding is that the, the 
four core, the, the quad core, the one that would Broadwells be appropriate are for not the, available yet. Exactly, and that's what, is what they would put in. The they, they can't. Inch. They don't even have Broadwells that would be appropriate for the MacBook Pro. Yeah. Um, and they're and I think they're actually delayed until you know maybe even July. So we're not probably not mm-hmm. going to see new 15 inch MacBook Pros for a while. Is the speculation? I mean, who the heck knows? I'm stating this with a lot of certainty, but it's all like, mm. yeah. I was excited that they updated the 13 inch, even though it was just pretty minor updates. But because I was, I'm in the market. I yeah. bought one. Uh, and I'll have one next week. I was also bummed. I feel like this is a problem that's like specific to Justin Davis. I feel like no one else will care. But when I bought my last MacBook Pro, I bought the lower end model, but then I paid more money to put a fancy GPU in it for gaming. Right. And now the only way you can get that fancy GPU is an entirely higher, like a, a configuration hmm. that's like five hundred more dollars. So you know, a bigger hard drive, a better CPU, and then you get the dedicated GPU, and it's a twenty five hundred dollar machine. And I'm like. All I really want is the GPU just to, you know, run Skyrim with a bunch of mods and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like I don't necessarily You don't need a five hundred and twelve. Yeah. Like I don't I don't drive. need yeah, and I don't need probably even the extra RAM. Um so so I kinda don't know what I'm gonna I'm like I'm kinda stuck in a weird spot right now where like I wanna do what I did last time and I can't. Get a Surface I, Pro. Yeah, I mean I, I probably just need to build a PC. Get For over d- it. Yeah desktop probably it's gonna be cheaper and faster honestly well but again i feel like it's a problem unique just to justin davis but uh i i depending on what time of day it is i game in different rooms and so i don't that's the reason i don't want to build a desktop you want to sit on the couch and use a touchpad to play to play skyrim (laughs) (laughs) i'll I'll sit on the couch and use a controller to play skyrim which is what i do now alex Um, you're just trolling (laughs) yeah (laughs) i just couldn't believe it when you said you used a touchpad to game last time i was like what no, I use the touchpad to play like SimCity and stuff. Okay. Not like real games. Still. Um. So sorry, just for the MacBook Pro, in case anyone was wondering, because I just I had to yeah. take a second to look this up. So when Mark Ryan was talking about having a quad core chip available, he's talking about this like the 15 inches, the, yep. like the high end, because the 13 inch still uses dual core chips. Yep. Because for a second I was like, wait, what? Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, that, that was the speculation of why the 15 didn't get refreshed at the same time. Cause yeah, because because those little bit lower end Broadwell chips were ready, and yeah. the higher end ones are not ready. Yeah. Oh, Intel. I know. Slowing things down for everyone. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's would ever come to pass, but there's rumors about Apple leaving Intel, and uh, you know, sort of unraveling that relationship. But what would they adopt instead? Probably do their own thing again. You saying Intel's on the market? Oh. Yeah, well, more like apples on the market. The, I, again, it's n- it never will happen, but that's the rumor, a rumor. Yeah. I give it. I give it ten percent. That's ten percent. Well, the J. Davis that's all it takes is ten percent to get you to repeat it on Tech <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I repeat things that I don't even. That I'm not even sure are true at all. <laughs> I told you I come at, when I'm in this podcast room. I am speaking from the heart, not from the brain. Okay. I just come in here and say things, uh-huh. and I leave the room. <laughs> that is true. And then people tweet at me, and they're like, "Man, I really liked what you said about blah on Tech Fetish." I'm like, "I have no memory <laughs> of saying that." You just dump it out and then move on. Yep. Well, with that said, it's the internet's like a big truck. What are your thoughts <laughs> on the Apple Watch? Um. I think it looks really cool. I think it looks better than the Android wearables. Um, I don't want one for the same. I just don't. I don't wear a watch. I don't wear a watch, and this didn't make me want to start wearing a watch. I'm so I'm curious about Mark Ryan's impression because you do wear a watch. Uh, well, I only wear a, a watch at Pebble because I don't know. I didn't wear a watch before. I because you Pebble. like gadgets. Yeah, exactly. Uh, was it you that I was talking to, or you the one that was asking me why pre-orders, pre-orders weren't, weren't available immediately? Yeah, that's think, a big question for me. I think I figured it out. It's really been sticking in my brain where they had this big event, but then pre-orders didn't open until you know they're still not open. almost they don't like open a month for later. Weeks. So it, why in the yeah. world wouldn't yeah, they take why? pre-orders starting day one? Why, Mark Ryan? I, I why? Out why? Oh. I, I'm onto it. I'm onto it. Why? You had a theory for me. I have a better theory. Let's okay. hear it. Okay. Okay. When are, when are the pre-orders? It's like April 10th or April something 10th. like that? Yeah. Conveniently, that is after April 1st, which gives them the out to just claim that this whole thing was a giant April Fool's <laughs> joke. You're a <laughs> jerk. I was, someone, someone sent along, in, in, in my side of the office, sent along a, a chart of the different configurations and the pricing of the Apple Watches. I was looking at this, I'm like, if they came out on, on, on April 1st and said, like, you, you thought we were actually going to do Surprise. that? Surprise. You think it's that bad? Some of it's ridiculous. Yes. Where does it start? You're not. You're not one of the people complaining about like the ten thousand dollars watches. No, that that one actually is the one that makes 
sort of sense. Sort of sense because like that's it makes ob- sense in that world. It's obviously not a mass-produced product that they plan on selling a bunch yeah. of. Anybody and if anybody doesn't like the reason that t- that gets sticks in my craw that people are complaining about the ten thousand dollar watch is because mm-hmm. that's what that's how much gold watches cost. Like that's well, it just is like not, anybody complaining about that has never not a, been not in all it. not all gold watches, but um, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> but. I will say that once you start using precious metals in something, like mm-hmm. the perceived value is just going to go up, and it the markup makes more sense at that point. I mean, it is it is uh, sort of outrageous, but it's not any more outrageous than any watch you could have bought for literally hundreds of years. It, it's Rolex watch. level stuff. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah. Here's what's outrageous: there's a stainless steel band that they're charging four hundred and fifty dollars for. Mm-hmm. What? And that act- and that actually to me made me laugh watch when band? I when I heard that it made me laugh because you know I just from all the tech that we you know we cover watch band my four. first thought is when something when someone says to me that this watch ranges from six hundred dollars to eleven hundred dollars mm-hmm. as like its range my first thought is oh what are the spec differences right. <laughs> yeah what are the spec differences and then it turns out it just has to do with the type of band that you buy it does seem that stainless yeah. steel watch feels like the one that's the odd man out like three hundred and fifty dollars for you know a really high end hope you know presumably apple's presuming better you know uh wearable experience of what mm. android's done it's like all right 350 is right. that where it starts 350 the yeah. aluminum ones are 350 for the girl size what, wait what for about the, really what about they the have sport? two sizes they yeah. have two sizes that's the sport yeah sport is 350. so there's three lines so there's 350 the, and then 400 there's the, the apple bigger. watch sport line and that starts at 350 for the smaller size which is a 38 millimeter body and then it's 50 dollars more for 400 dollars for the 42 millimeter body <laughs> and then the next line is the just apple watch and that, this is the other part that has me convinced that it's a joke is that their branding makes no sense. <laughs> no, that's fashion, man. It's it like no uh, it's like Mark by Mark Jacobs. <laughs> yeah. Mark by Mark, South by Southwest. Yeah. So that one starts at five fifty. Yeah. And for the, the only difference yeah. is that it's made out of stainless steel versus aluminum. Yeah, so the bo- so the bottom line, the mm. Apple Watch Sport is made of aluminum, and then mm-hmm. the uh, Apple Watch line is stainless steel, yeah. and then you have what is it? Apple Watch Edition. The Edition. Which, Wh- which is, edition? Oh, it's just the Edition. So that's the gold it's line. Like the Edge. The, eight, the eighteen karat exactly. gold yeah. line. The U two guitarist starts at ten thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh! Yeah, the 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 expensive ones are whatever you know. The cheaper ones, I think, are in line with expectations. It mm-hmm. is that middle, the middle steel ones that I don't necessarily understand who they're for, or who's going to buy them. I mean, I, do you think this is the first Apple product that's going to have like a really soft launch? No, the, the Apple I think TV people are going to be excited way. about it. But well, I do have a real theory about the delayed pre-orders. By the way. I think it's to well, give you them. You think my theory is not real? Yes. I think my theory is 100% real. <laughs> Expect it. It's Put a, it on it's your a, calendar. It's April a real Fools. theory. It's really your theory. April 1st, Apple is going to come out and be like, seriously, guys? You thought? <laughs> like, Tim Cook, come on. like, JK. Were you, were, were, <laughs> LOL. Justin, were you going to say that it's basically to give them time to get those I- models into the stores? No. I was going to say it's a, well, that's also super plausible. Yeah. It's to give them time to get, yeah, that's per- much smarter than my crazy <laughs> crackpot theory. Come on, get it out. Let's hear it. Uh, Apple's financial quarters roughly follow. Oh, quarters in the real yeah, world yeah. and i think they're a publicly traded company and they would probably be obligated to give some kind of statement about how pre-orders are going you know in their quarterly results which um which close at the end of march and so yeah. now it gives them a whole quarter to to build to sell watches before they have to say anything about how oh that's good that's, I good think that's thinking. actually really good that yeah valid. i mean it also i but mean it still feels like they could start pre-orders even a week earlier but I, I don't know i guess it depends on what point they. i don't know exactly revenue. when their quarterly results are sure like, because it's not exactly on the quarter, mm-hmm. so maybe it is like you know April eighth or something. Does anybody know anyone who plans on getting one? I do. Okay, um, one, one person. Yes, just pair, one. Pair was definitely going to get one because I don't know anyone. Fran might get one. Okay, I'm just so, speculating based on their personality. <laughs> oh, gotcha. Just because I, I usually when a new iPhone or a new iPad or a laptop or whatever's coming, like I know a handful of people. Usually, like half the people I know are getting one of them. Because, you know, they're on that cycle where, oh, it's been two years or in a laptop, it's mm-hmm. been four years. I'm going to get one. But I just – I don't know anybody who's getting this. You know, honestly, the person that I know who's planning to get one, it's – you know, he's a big Apple fan. But sure. I think more than – oh, I guess actually I know two. Um, and they're both Apple fans. But I think more than that, and the person that I'm closer to, they're just super curious about what's going to distinguish this from, say, buying an Android Wear smartwatch. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, you can open a garage door. I mean, I feel like can it? 
So yeah. here's the thing about Android Wear. It's a lot simpler, but it's mostly because that it just hasn't been developed yet, where I feel like in some ways Apple Watch, from everything they said, and just from like you know the hands-on that like PC Mag, our sister publication, did, they it just seems like they're on the opposite end of the spectrum where they have almost too much going on with the Apple yeah. Watch. So it'll be kind of interesting to see like who gravitates towards what, and if Google decides to actually start really pushing out more updates and developing Android Wear as a yeah. platform. Do you guys think it's interesting that they there's no games on Apple Watch right now? Uh, Would you really want to game on something that, that small, though? And another thing, they oh, don't I want got, to cannibalize I iOS at all. on this bad boy. <laughs> yeah, I absolutely, I absolutely think it's super strange, especially because they are showing off third-party apps. Like, it's not like – like, the iPhone launched with no app store, only Apple apps. Mm. And the iWatch is launching with third-party apps, but no talk of any kind of gaming presence. Yeah, I think it's super strange, even given the really small screen, because games dominate the App Store. They're yeah. like they're like 90 of the top 100 grossing apps. Like, it is the App Store. Mm-hmm. And for that giant category to just be completely absent I'm is sure we're going to see some games that are, you know, like half played on the watch and half played on the phone, you know? Like, yeah. yeah, I don't know. Like, like simple – I'm surprised there's not simple one-touch – I'm just surprised there's not, you know, Fruit Ninja. Like, it's just weird. Yeah. Sure. Or you play a lot of uh, Tiny Tower? Yeah. Well, no, I don't. I used to. You used to? How great would it be? You get the notification that that something's in stock, and then you can hit the button to do whatever Mm -hmm. it takes because you have to hit the button. Great yeah. gameplay. That's the that's that's gameplay. <laughs> Just hit this button every four hours. Reminds me of having that's Tiny Tower. What was yeah. that Tomogachi? Where you had to like yeah, tend like to it every so often. Like that would be yeah. like if that app was yeah. available at launch, a virtual pet, a Tomogachi for your iWatch. Like, I'm not saying that any of that needs to replace. Like, it's frivolous. Like, it's frivolous compared to the actual apps that they're showing, especially the health stuff. But it, its absence was very notable to me. Yeah, I mean, I'm, it, maybe it's just because of where wearables are. They're still in that point where Apple and, you know, Google for that matter. Okay, I'm uh, not crazy. The Verge has a headline, where are the Apple Watch games? But they're <laughs> they're at a point where they have to prove the, the viability of these things as a platform, like the usefulness of it. And so yeah. if you put games on it, maybe that's interesting, but... See, but this it's is not going to convince me to get one. It's no different than, and I went on this rant on Tech Fetish, so I apologize, but it was over a year ago, so you know <laughs> you get to hear it again. Um, That's fair. Every platform, no, like uh, Apple and Facebook and company after company, backs into becoming a game company. Sure. And they release, you know, app, Facebook releases Canvas, and they say you can make whatever you want, and then it turns out all anybody cares about is games, and that happens on platform after platform. When you open it up widely, everybody just wants to play games, and everybody just wants to make games. And so, so to say, like it's just a no-brainer for the Apple Watch. I think it's, I think its absence is super strange. Well, like it could also just be tied to trying to get everything done in time, right? So if you yeah. want to, because like they spend so much of that press conference on the whole medical research angle. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they spent like fifteen yeah. minutes mm-hmm. of it's, the it's hour a and a half item. on that. And a luxury item, you yeah. know, and I think the fact that they have like you know like a model up there wearing it. Yeah, they, they spent wanna, like half an hour on that. They want to make it. Adult, and I feel like putting show, showcasing games, they feel like will detract from that. So, do we know what can the Apple Watch do on its own without a phone? <laughs> like, like, what calculations can run on the device? Itself? You can listen to, to music, it can store up to two gigabytes of music. Yeah, like, I guess I don't really know too much about the s- specs of the They haven't the watch. talked a lot, actually. It was funny because that press conference was very drawn out. I feel like in that same amount of time, they could have actually spoken to more of actual details, and they really didn't. So the, there's been really very little talk about what's available offline, so to speak, when you're not connected mm. to a phone. Well, because it's really like a lot of the functions and stuff that they're talking about are really just sort of, the, you know, it's that wireless communication between your smartphone and the absence of what if you don't own an iPhone? Like, what's your Apple Watch like then? Do you have to have a phone? I mean, you have like to have. Straight the, up? What if well, you don't? Well, you have to have an iPhone to, in order to even download and browse apps for the watch. Hmm. So you can't really, you know, do maintenance, so to speak, on it and, like, basically manage it without an iPhone. It makes me think a little bit of, um, and I have no idea how, like, apt this uh, metaphor is, but, like, the first two iPods were, were Mac <coughs> only. Mm-hmm. And people forget that a lot. It wasn't until the third iPod that the, you could even use it with a PC, and that's when it sort of had this, you know, spike in sales. And the Apple Watch seems like maybe it's kind of similar in the sense that, like, it's going to be this cool device that, like, a certain group of people are going to be really into, but, like, 
they kind of need to get their feet underneath them. Like I think they have to remove that dependency of uh, dependency on the iPod or iPhone first yeah. of all. I don't know. Yeah, that seems fair. I don't think it'll ever go away because you can't put too much processing power in that thing and keep the battery life no, decent. No, but I think what Justin means is like kind of more like platform, like um, hardware agnostic, where it's like the Pebble, where ah. you can use it with with Android, the, uh, Android or heck, that'll I don't never know. happen. Yeah. Well, yeah, but use it Windows. in the absence of an iPhone at least. Yeah. Like what we, if someone just wants a watch, a fancy watch? There's not a lot of standalone smartwatches on the market in general. I think just Pebble. <laughs> I was, I was giving well, you no, I mean like because to... even that like is still dependent. Like a lot of the functionality is still dependent on right. hooking it to a smartphone. Right. But if there I, are. If I never connected it to a smartphone, yeah. it'd be pretty damn useless. Right. So there have been a couple. Mm. It's been pretty damn useless. That sounds like a good description for the <laughs> Apple Watch. <laughs> Tagline. <laughs> um, but I think harsh. Samsung had yep. like a standalone <laughs> smartwatch, right, where you didn't actually need a smartphone and you actually had all the functionality on the watch, mm-hmm. but it didn't really take off. So. I need to see the UI, sort of the bubbles, or I don't remember the, the you know their term for it. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I need to get my hands on it myself. Like when they're demoing, like when they were first demoing iOS before I had ever played it myself, I still like got it. It's like, okay, it's swiping and every app is a full screen experience. You know, it's like, I, you know, I get it, but th- I don't know if this is going to feel good or not feel good. I don't know about the, the crown. Yeah, I mean, I I suspect that it'll feel fine. That's like one thing Apple generally always gets right. Yeah, they're usually pretty good at that. I mean, for me, the the big question is still just about will this thing be useful enough that I'm willing to spend three hundred and fifty dollars minimum, or uh, that I'm willing to charge every day. Did like, you? That's a big question for me. Yes, the eighteen hours of battery life. So Justin and I talked about this briefly during mm-hmm. the conversation that we did earlier this week, but. That 18 hours, I think, is going to be really disappointing to people who are used to Apple products. Mm-hmm. I think um, on the Android side of things where I can get you know, almost a full day, like 24 hours out of the Moto 360, you know, having an Android phone, you're kind of more used to that whole like, okay, like battery life really depends on what manufacturer you're with, right? Whereas with Apple, people have gotten really used to like their MacBooks lasting all day, their mm-hmm. iPhones lasting a really long yeah, time. Yeah, but again, as I explained to Mark Ryan, <laughs> if you get up, you always talk to him. You don't talk to us. That's true. Well, he <laughs> he finds me in the lunchroom. <laughs> um, if you get up at seven in the morning and strap your watch on, eighteen hours takes you till one a.m. <laughs> Like it's fine. That's totally a whole day. But that's mixed use, right? I mean, that I mean, that's probably not somebody. I mean, if say you're an executive and you're getting constant email pings or constant mess like text messages, yeah. I'm pretty sure you're not going to actually get that 18 hours, or even if not you're an executive level, but just someone who's just really yeah. plugged in and really. I mean, we'll, all the time. obviously we'll get our hands on it and put it through its paces and have, you know, a battery life report. But it, it, Apple's generally really good about, like, the days of, like, someone saying, you get 12 hours of battery life, mm-hmm. but then that's only if, like, ev- like if the screen's yeah, off the sure. whole time. Like, the screen is at 10% over, like, brightness. Usually, if anything, Apple's actually underreported battery life yeah, um, so and things like their MacBook Air. Yeah, I, I don't really doubt the 18 hours that much. I mean, I think there will definitely be situations where you can make it run out quicker, and I think, you know, your example is definitely a, a valid point. But for me, even if it does last 18 hours, like, that still, to me, represents, like, kind of fretting over you know managing the battery life where my iphone i could go two days without charging it i don't because i don't want to worry about it right i get to the end of the day and i've got 65 percent battery life i'm like oh i could do another day but there's no way i would choose to do that because then the next day every time something happens i'm like ooh, you have so when you go to bed you're at about 65 percent yeah usually you liar I'm usually at about... I've I'm, edited photos today. What, what am I at right now? <laughs> you just dropped it in front of me like, damn. <laughs> yeah, 82. I don't That's know what right. black magic you're doing, but yeah. I'm usually at about 40 at the end of the day. Really? Yeah. Sure. Okay. What, are you, what about you? Well, what did, I, ch- I charged it this morning because I was at 35. And now well, I'm you know, at, like when you plug it in, you know what you're usually at at night, right? Oh, at night? Yeah. I mean, usually I'm at like, you know, I'm at like 60 or 70 at the end of the day. Wow. I mean, I use this a lot. Mm. And this is the 6 Plus, the big boy one. Yeah. Big boy. Not, not like mine. <laughs> nope. Little man phone. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, you're just trolling today, buddy. Uh, but yeah, I, I mean, like if your phone was, you know, consistently almost running out at the end of every day, wouldn't you be a little bit more hesitant to use it? No. Throughout the day? You don't think so? Do you take your watch off at night when you go to bed? Oh, yeah. 
See, because that was another conversation I was having with someone on Twitter where they were freaking out mm-hmm. about the battery life. I'm like, dude, just charge every night. What's the problem? And he's like, I mm-hmm. usually leave my watch on. I don't take my watch I do off. know people who do that, who sleep with their watches. I'm, so I'm not that guy. But... That's a complaint I understand. Because yeah. then that's a yeah. total, like... Especially because they do a lot of, like, sleep tracking and stuff. Yeah. You know? Like, I, yeah. I'm not into that, but... The sleep tracking is a good point. But the guy who's sleeping with his watch, that's probably, like, a $40 watch, you know? I don't want to, like roll over onto and like smack my like $500 Apple watch on the headboard or whatever. What are you doing yeah. in your sleep? I flail in my sleep, guys. <laughs> do, you? do you? I'm just saying I'm not taking that risk. I wake up in pretty much the same position. Yeah. That I, I wake asleep. up Me consistently too. with like the sheets and the comforter on the floor. Oh, really? wow. I'm not kidding. Wow. Yeah. I, I basically destroyed the bed when I sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> feel sorry for your future speaking of which did you see this gawker article that was um take the pledge i will not have sex with anyone who wears an apple watch which no. i thought was super funny yeah, yeah this guy was just like just kind of seems just annoying to me just kind of trolling well he is kind of annoying but it was pretty funny <laughs> it's pretty funny yeah he's that uh, he's kind of like that annoying guy in class who you roll your eyes at a lot but you're like mm, my life would be a little less entertaining if this guy wasn't sure. around <laughs> yeah to be clear i have nothing against anybody that wants an apple watch I just don't want one. <laughs> yeah. Mark Ryan clearly stating that he has no hate for his fellow human beings. No, not at all. Yeah. I like I like gadgets a lot. You yeah, know, me and too. I, I like to try out new things, but um, you know, I don't know. It's hard enough, like even my wedding ring is just like it's on my hand all the time. Like I would never I could never see myself wearing a big Oh my gosh, Did you, you ever guys lose your wedding Apple ring? wedding ring. No. Apple rings. I just thought of I gotta call up tim cook with a little touch like there's like a, yeah. a touch sensitive yeah guys yeah, this will be yeah, my like, last tech fetish use, ever i'm gonna be working at apple next week you can use that to like call your car yeah that's, that's tech Ooh. fetish 2025 yeah we'll be talking about the apple ring they'll be like wow that guy alex you know who's like ceo of apple now he totally called that <laughs> you guys will be there with your walkers and you're like e-respirators why are we gonna be so old and you're gonna be the ceo of apple <laughs> oh yeah 2025 that's 10 years from now <laughs> yeah. well all have invented some weird aging products that you won't be able to afford. you'll uh the way that the, they work is who's ever the tallest they just name the new ceo it's true that's like invader zim you ever watch that cartoon yeah the, the two leaders of the planet are the the tallest mm-hmm. exactly makes it simple i know it really is fortunate that the world does not run that way i, 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 I disagree yeah, I was it's say. fortunate for me it'd be a lot of responsibility but i could handle it i wonder who the tallest is maybe he's the tallest person in the world maybe he'd be awesome at it i mean maybe he would there are a lot of people in charge that are not good at it'd be max and i running this place i have no idea what that would be like but it probably wouldn't be good you can probably run ign i don't know too much credit over here man yeah it's one of those things he's not a small man but i mean i couldn't do that job there's like more people that could do the job than there are like job like only one person can be president but there's probably like thousands of people that would do it totally that, that could handle yeah. it yeah. yeah the world's tallest man is terrifying i'm looking at a photo right he's now. probably got a, a bad a he? bad disease yeah that's true oh okay well, this is a photo of him with the world's shortest man oh. so that's <laughs> would you All like right. would you like to hold that up for people to see nah no <laughs> all right we'll put it in the we'll put it will in you the sp- at least spin it around so i can see nah making you wait all right so guys i actually have a question for you moving on from the watch Mm -hmm. to apple tv so with that whole exclusive deal with hbo yeah i mean obviously and also the price drop from a hundred dollars to seventy dollars obviously gonna move a decent amount of units yeah moved one yeah you bought one did you get one that was that pushed you over yep but my question is do you guys think that they did this just to you know, say, hey, we got HBO first, or it's because they're actually trying to move stock because it wasn't moving pre- previously. Yeah, I mean, the one pause when I bought mine was like, are we six months away from like a badass new Apple TV 2.0? And mm-hmm. they're trying to like unload the ones that they have. But I, I don't know the answer to that question, but it was like a little voice in the back of my head. Then I said, shut up, voice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then I got we're out. Spending, up, we're spending yeah, the $70. We're spending money. Plus sales tax mm-hmm. right now. Yeah, that's what that's exactly. Oh, and the California um, recycling fee. Yeah, I shut that I shut that <laughs> voice down and spent the money. And then I took the device home and didn't even set it up. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It, it, we've basically been waiting for Apple to execute on some grand TV scheme for – five plus years and yeah nothing's really been happening with yeah if you'd have traveled back in time and told someone that no no apple's gonna get into watches before tvs do you would have believed it no no Um, you you, mark ryan you've had an apple tv for a while right? yeah and you use it i use it mostly for airplay 
Yeah, which is that's, that's what, very that's good what I think I'll use for streaming your yeah. music all around the house. Yeah, or? streaming music or or um, if I'm like I watch UFCs and they'll have UFC app. They didn't have uh, the Apple TV yeah. for a while, so I, I airstream that. I mean, I kind of it's the same joke that we've always said on Tech Fetish. We're like in my house, there's like 11 devices that can stream Netflix, mm-hmm. so it's like it's kind of like for me, it doesn't mm. matter. But I feel like there's a lot of households. Maybe there's not any more. But for many years, there were a lot of households that were in the market for like a streaming box. Like it's mm-hmm. friggin' fierce between like Roku and like all these other people. And like Apple, you know, sixty nine dollar Apple TV is as good an option as any. Like, mm-hmm. or probably much better than most. You know, like that's that's a total like valid space to it's, be in. It's kind of interesting that they did drop the price, but only by thirty dollars, and they didn't change the hardware at all, if, unless I'm mistaken. No, no it's like the exact it's, it's the exact same model right. as the, they've been the, selling the since twenty twelve. Yeah, I mean, you, you, no, no, no. It's the, the twenty twelve one's the big one, and they did release the small one. Has it been that? Long what are you talking since? about? Small and big one. There was the bigger, there was the big Apple TV. Then they released the yeah. small one. There was a, small there was a large one. one. Oh. And they sized it down. I mean, you, you they might have sized it down that long ago. We might already had the small one that long. I guess what I, what I was getting at though is that it's interesting that they, you know, took the choice of making us the same unit and trying to drop the price, but that they only dropped it by thirty dollars. I feel like. Yeah, you're right that the the current model was introduced in 2012. Okay. Yeah, okay. I was just about to Google to prove you wrong. Whoa. But I was just like wondering. Whoa. <laughs> it's not about who's right and wrong, Elena, especially when I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but I have to think if like they, if Apple was really gung ho about setting up this new platform and establishing it, which it seems like they are with this exclusive deal with HBO, that yeah. they could have dropped the price even more, like and made it just even that much more of an impulse buy. Well, right? if it was like a fifty dollar device, like they could sell one to almost everybody that went in and bought I an think- iPhone. I think that's probably dependent on how long their exclusivity is, though, because yeah. it's only a three month deal. Oh, is that so, true? Yeah, it expires after three months, so it's oh. not that long. But that's after long Game of enough. Thrones, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. It's still that Game of Thrones, so it kind of yeah. Doesn't it was matter. it was three months super is the brilliant same as on their part because it's yeah. all about Game of Thrones. So just just keep stealing your parents' HBO Go password for three months more, guys. That was why I bought one. Is I'm like for me, it was a no brainer. Like I cut the cord. I don't have cable TV, mm-hmm. um, and I've we've gotten by with like Netflix and stuff on consoles. And I'm like, all right, so I can get an Apple TV and six months of HBO Go for less money than it costs to buy a Game of Thrones box set, Blu-ray box set. So I'm like, yeah, let's do it. And I didn't, I didn't even have to think twice about it. Like it was, I usually hem and haw over like purchases, and this one was a super no-brainer. Like hem and haw. That's I just imagine he was like Foghorn Leghorn. Is that like a Midwest? I don't know. That's I, pretty Midwest, man. Okay, sometimes yeah. Midwest are just old. I don't. Yeah, yeah, a little bit of both. I don't think. <laughs> see, I've I don't, heard it out here. Yeah, I don't yeah. think it's a Midwest. Thing. But not from anyone our age. No. Is it really? I don't know. I've, I occasionally. Use it's it. a so, little bit of grandpa terminology, I've been but in, I knew what you I've meant. I've been in San Francisco for seven or eight years yeah. now, and like every once in a while, something comes out. That's like very much like yeah. a Midwest. Yeah. Like, yeah. Everyone just it? stops. Like whoa. People had never heard of. Uh, was it pumpkin bars? What is that? You. It's a it's a <laughs> snack, right? It's no, it's a dessert. It's oh a yeah, delicious dessert. yeah, like lemon bars. Oh, well, sort of, but not. I'm just saying. Uh, so you something don't get, you don't get drinks at the pumpkin bar. No, 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 no. Okay. It's a dessert. Okay. Um, I thought it was some kind of exotic new San Francisco bar that opened. Mm-hmm. It's like a tiki we've, bar. We've had a lot of those. <laughs> yeah. It, it, so getting back to the Apple TV. Um, uh, they haven't exactly been crushing it with that device. Um, that's an understatement. No. But they still, like, I'm on the Wikipedia page right now, and, like, they're totally not, like, resting either. In 2014 alone, you know, they launched, it looks like, 15 or 20 more, like, dedicated streaming. You know, ABC, AOL, PBS, uh, History Channel, WWE, CNBC, Fox. Like, they're, they're continuing to add, like, that services. Yeah. yeah. I would pr- I- I would probably have one if it wasn't for Amazon Instant. I got yeah. I gotta have my Amazon. Yeah, see, Instant. that's yeah. the thing. Like now, we pay for Amazon Prime still for the two yeah. day shipping. Mm-hmm. So now I have Prime, Netflix, and you know HBO Go. I'm gonna sign up for, and it's like it's starting to feel like I cut the cord, but it's like, huh. You, you still got that big bill. And like I'm assuming, like we're using Google Express for shopping, and I'm assuming Google is gonna do the same thing as Amazon and start adding services into like Google Express. How maybe. much is it for Google Express? It's a hundred bucks a year. Okay. Or um, it, again, it's primarily a shopping service, so it can also be five dollars per delivery if you don't subscribe. Mm. Um. So what is that? What are you paying per month then? Because you've got that Netflix. Yeah, I don't so count. I, I don't guess... count the Google Express. That's just like a future thing. Right. But, uh, Amazon Prime is what is it, eighty bucks a year? They raise it to hundred. It's a hundred. It's a flat hundred. Okay, so that's a hundred bucks a year. Netflix is Netflix is eight bucks a month. Yeah, so yeah. that's ninety six bucks a year. Fast math. And, so uh, that's like you get two hundred so far. And 
HBO is 15 a month, but we won't subscribe for a year. We'll yeah. subscribe for like six months. So that's another uh, 120 bucks. 320 bucks a year. That's much cheaper, cheaper than, than cable. 120 dollars a month. Yeah. yeah, that's still cheaper than cable. Yeah, yeah. I you mean, probably add what is it? Uh, Sling TV to that. Yeah. So. I'm really excited about HBO now. Like, I think HBO is, is like the best shows on television. I didn't have any way to watch them before at all, with you know, yeah. without resorting to piracy. Like, it's an, it's an example of like the system working. Where mm-hmm. like, I would be really tempted to pirate, you know, Game of Thrones or True Detective or whatever. But now they've given me like a really reasonable, in my opinion, reasonably priced way to you know go legit or uh, be legit because I would certainly never pirate anything. Of yeah. course not. Certainly. Absolutely. None of us here know anything about torrents. Nope. What? what I do wonder I do wonder if Apple is kind of uh under the radar ramping up their T V efforts though. Like you mentioned that all these new services are coming out for for Apple TV and I've actually noticed it as an Apple T V user that new things keep popping up. Yeah, this well, this is a huge, they've been like and they're like really specific. Kind of quietly though. doing it. I do think some of that is just to compete though, because Roku has had like PBS yeah. and I think some it's just of like a couple keeping pace. Yeah, just cause a couple of things that you named, I mean, those are already standard on some of the Roku devices I was, you know, reviewing last year but when we, I was, you know, a different job. And I'm sure that those, you know, content creators are just begging to be on there. You know, like they you know, they want to be on as many platforms as they can be. Yeah, like Where's my IGN app? That's a good question. That is Where is it? It's on the Fire TV. It's on the Fire TV. There is an app on the Fire TV. That's right. Xbox One. Because they have a platform you can PS4. develop for. Yeah. It's funny how that works, though, because I bought the Apple TV literally like only HBO, HBO Now. Don't intend to use it for anything else. But then I started looking at the list. And I'm like, well, I like Major League Soccer a lot. Maybe like because they have the MLS app. Mm-hmm. I'm like, maybe I'll get the MLS package, too. And it's like you, the gears already kind of start yeah. turning. Like the upselling <laughs> starts immediately. So you don't think there's enough on there on HBO that you would keep it all year? Because I kind of agree with you that I would go in and out based on shows. No, I mean, we'll watch Game of Thrones, and we didn't watch True Detective. We'll watch that. And I actually yeah. don't know how – I don't know the movie selection. Like, I don't know if it's good or bad. The movie selection, usually there's, like, two really big, really good movies that you might have seen. Like, Grand Budapest Hotel is on there, and yeah. Neighbors is on there. And yeah. those are, like, the two things that I've watched on, on, on there. Yeah, no, nah, we'll probably just watch that and then cancel. Yeah. You know, and I'm fine with that. And we'll use it for, you know, easily streaming music. Although our TV has Bluetooth built in, so it's like. AirPlay is probably going to be better than Bluetooth, yeah. though. Yeah, the range of your Bluetooth is probably limited. Interesting. Have you tried it? Yeah. Okay. I can't fig- I can't work. I'm feeling, I'm starting to feel like an old man because I can't figure out how my TV works. I can't, like, work its menus. You will, yeah. You, you, TVs aren't known for having the slickest menus. You need to wait menus. for your kid to get, like, five or six. And yeah. She'll know everything. Yeah, hurry how, up in age and know way more things than I do. How fast is she going to surpass me? It's freaking terrifying. It's going to be quick. It's ridiculous how fast they pick it up. I have, like, a niece where you hand her anything with a screen and she already knows to swipe and yeah. pinch and zoom. Yeah. It's a little uncanny. Although we don't let our daughter look at screens. No, I mean, I know that. I mean, yeah. you've mentioned it, but it, it is really uncanny how quickly they pick it up. Mm-hmm. It's also uncanny that, uh, you know, my daughter doesn't know what television is or what an iPad is, but, like, the few times that, like, we've carried her out before the TV turned off, like, her eyes just, boof, just, like, <laughs> s- instantly drawn Motion to it. Motion and color. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. It's insane. So it's... you've never taken her to a movie either, right? What? No. What? <laughs> She's 10 Are you months. Joking? There's, like, baby movies, like Mommy Matinees. What? No. Mommy Matinees? Yeah. Like, sounds... It's like a 10 a.m. movie where they know the kids are going to cry. It's all babies. No, we've never done that. We mm-hmm. would never do that. I mean, I guess that sounded very I, judgy. I bet it's... you'll be doing it in a year. Let me, I mean, let me it seems walk... like a nice time to me. That's for, not if you're a kid. for our family if other okay, people it's want not, it. It's not for our family. <laughs> yeah. I feel I at the <laughs> I moment I said we would never do we that, would... I instantly <laughs> felt bad. No, but it seemed like a nice idea to me. I think everyone has to do what's right for them. are actually more geared towards people with, like, like toddler uh, children. Okay. I'm not sure if it's necessarily meant for someone who's like nursing an infant. Still. Gotcha. There was All a, the kids are the same to me. Either they is, can talk to me or they can't. There was an <laughs> infant in a stroller at the Dark Knight Rises when I saw that. Oh, God. Wow. Oh, God. I saw A History of Violence, that movie with like a six year old in the row behind me, and I wanted oh to like goodness. tell the management, like, that's a messed up movie. And I was well, like, wow. Yeah. That's just the one that, that movie's like a ten years old, but it like sticks in my mind because yeah. I was like, Oh my god. This stuff's the worst. Yeah. Whew. Well, on that, on that note, note. Yeah, on that note. Now that Alex has ruined everything. <laughs> well, not that you've ruined everything, but it's kind of dark, right? Where mm-hmm. you're like six. I was scared by E. T. Yeah. You know, when I was four. When he just, jumps out of the closet. Can't imagine watching like a full like R with R rated movie, mm-hmm. you know, at the age of six. So 
kids these days are probably more resilient than I was. Anyway, that pretty much wraps up this show for this week. We had a couple of like random other news blurbs that hit. Like, for example, Disney is talking about potentially having like virtual reality experiences. So I guess you can do mm. that if you can't afford going to Disneyland. It's a great idea. Which mm-hmm. I thought was interesting. My billion-dollar VR idea is you put on a VR headset, and then inside the virtual environment, your task is to put on a VR headset. <laughs> Very inception. A lot of people like accidentally smashing the helmet that they're already wearing. <laughs> and then it just re- recur it's like recursive oh forever. God. Like then you put on the VR headset in the VR world and then guess where the, you are. That's what, that's what we're in right now. You know that. <laughs> we're, we're in the matrix. <laughs> we're yes. the matrix. Yes. We're in the matrix. Resolution's great. Um yeah. there's uh, apparently three D printed pancakes. Like, there's a Kickstarter for a 3D printer that does pancakes. And it's pretty – it's actually really intricate. Like, you can do, like, all sorts of different kinds of shapes. So it's like if you're doing that whole, like, breakfast in bed thing, you can, like, really, like, amp it up. Guys, before you kickstart this, if you send me $10, I will send you a turkey baster and some cookie cutters. And we will both break even. <laughs> so don't kickstart that. Don't – don't ever underestimate Alex's ability as comics editor. Find you yeah. some kind of awesome deal. We, uh, I want to give a special special shout out to IGN's headline for this story written by Seth Macy. He said, pancake printer prints pancake portraits. <laughs> <laughs> Love those alliterations. It was well done. Yeah. It was also a tongue twister that I could not survive. Mm-hmm. I'm a professional. <laughs> Um, and then the last interesting news blurb of the week, with among you know, all the others that are on the site, which is uh, the researchers have come up with a, a kind of liquid metal that essentially is kind of like the first step towards seeing um, one of what, what is it, the T-1000 yeah, version of the Terminator, which is kind of terrifying. Guys. How come nobody was bothered when Toyota made the T-100 pickup truck? No. Right after. Well, it's just a big truck. <laughs> no one was afraid. I don't think anyone thought it was going to be a Transformer. As too a kid, many, I might have. Well, it's true. <laughs> but too many uh, rights and patents and all that, probably, mm. trademarks to come together in order for that to work. Liquid metal, though. Liquid that can take f- the different forms. And, yeah, that's super spooky. Everything is terrifying. <laughs> I'm not. That should be, that should be like, it should be like tech fetish, colon. Everything <laughs> is terrifying. <laughs> tech fetish. Get scared. Yeah. <laughs> That'll be our Halloween tagline right there we already booked it in march that'll be that'll be the title of my book <laughs> <laughs> everything is terrifying by yeah, dustin davis exactly you could actually hear first. a really good idea <laughs> <laughs> well you better uh, hurry up and what is it you have to like if you have like an idea for something you have to like like an, a really cheap way of doing like copyright is to write it out and send it to yourself but not open the seal on the envelope so you have proof of like when the concept was made wow mm. I wonder if you could just leave like, could I open like a Google Doc? I don't think so, because those are, because those are. But they have like edited. edited yeah, sites. but digital stuff is usually not uh, admissible in court. I don't. I'm just saying, like that is in the class. Like they know when that mm-hmm. was created and written down. And I plus, tr- it's on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I trust Google to keep time much better than the post office personally. That's true. I'm just saying. I read this a long time ago before you know cloud sure, sure. saving was a thing. Yeah. Yeah, that totally makes sense. Turns out there is already a book called Everything is Terrifying. I just Googled it. Mm. This has been a roller coaster of emotion <laughs> here on the tail end of Tech Fetish, episode number 228. 228. Nice. I keep track. All right. So wrapping up the show, as always, if you have questions or comments or anything that you want to ask us, you can just email us at techfetish at IGN.com. We also have two awesome groups of people, um, one on Google Plus and one on Facebook. I believe the Facebook group is IGN Tech Fetish Podcast, and it's similarly named for Google Plus. Um, of course, you can always reach out to us on Twitter. I am at Morphing Ball. You next? Yep. I am at Aero Justin, E R R O R Justin. Alex? At Alex L. Roth. And Mark Ryan. Uh, M R Salee with two L's and two E's. Well, that does it for this week. Thanks for tuning in, and we will catch you guys next week.